Hey folks, Roland Martin here. I am live from the Washington, D.C. Law Office of Walker and Associate for the last couple of days. A lot of folks all across social media have been talking about uh, this uh, alleged embezzlement taking place at Howard University, some $1 million, according to university officials, that had been embezzled or improperly allocated. Well, a couple of days ago when social media hit, uh, folks were talking about Tyrone Hankerson Jr., uh, a student at Howard University who used to work in the financial aid office, uh, who, according to this anonymous blog post on Medium.com, embezzled $429,000. And, of course, there have been all kind of memes and all kind of different hashtags uh, blasting him. Uh, you've seen photos of him, images of him uh, wearing furs and those sort of outfits and travel all around the world. And people have been saying that uh, he was living high on the hog. And so uh, his attorney, James Walker, reached out to me uh, to sit down with him for a one-on-one. -on -one, and that's what we are about to do. So first and foremost, Tyrone Hankerson, Jr., thanks for sitting down with us. James Walker, thanks for sitting down with us as well. First and foremost, Tyrone, what has been your life like over the last two days since this medium story dropped saying you essentially stole $429,000? Um, it's been an extremely difficult time, of course, as you can imagine. Um, there have been, as you said, a lot of things on social media that, um, you know, jokes and things like that. And we, and, you know, I understand as a millennial, of course, that that is just the nature of how these things go. So I am trying to remain um, optimistic about the situation. However, it has been a challenge, particularly going to class um, you know, worrying about safety and welfare concerns. And you're still a student at Howard University? I am a student at Howard University. That and is correct. Law school? Law school. So when did you finish undergraduate? I finished undergrad in 2015. And you in the final year of your law school? Yes, I am. So final, said, month. Said, final, final month. Final month. Set to graduate when? May 12th. I'll be walking across the stage. Now, when did you work in the financial aid office? I worked there when I was um, in undergrad. So I worked there from 2011 until 2015. And what was your job there? I was a student worker, um, but I primarily served the directors within the Office of Financial Aid. So I worked as an assistant, and as I was there for some years, um, I had the opportunity yet to serve as an assistant, but not technically. I was just a student worker. Now, according to this blog post, um, they claim that you embezzled $429,000. Um, did you embezzle $429,000? No, I have not embezzled any money ever, and I have not taken or embezzled $429,000 from Howard University. That is absolutely false. Um, where do you think this is coming from? So I think that that requires a little more context to understand what's going on with the university, which is what this story, I think, was intended to be about in Dr. Frederick, and somehow I'm being used now as a, me as a means to get Dr. Frederick out of his current position. Um, I think that, in my opinion, the university, prior to Dr. Frederick's becoming president, was stagnant in where we were in terms of facilities and things like that. And Dr. Frederick has been trying to move the university forward. And in doing that, there have been some bumps along the way, which, generally speaking, inconvenience students. And I think the students are upset and they're tired, and rightfully so in some regards. Um, but in trying to hurt him, because just the day, a day before this article came out about me, or two days before, there was a group who released a demand for him uh, that called for his resignation. And then afterwards, they released another article alleging that I had embezzled or other people had embezzled money um, from the university. And I think that was a ploy to stick it to Dr. Frederick, which at this point, I mean, they're in the administration building doing you know, a lot of crazy, you know, they've taken over the yeah, they're, they've they're taken over the A-building. And I, Roland, I just want to chime in here, and I really want Tyrone to talk, Roland, but I want to point out to those who are watching you, the 429,000, when it first came out, there was this uh, false image that he had gotten that for four years. He's been at Howard seven years. There was also this false image that a part of the money was not the money he got for working there. He worked at the school, so a part of the money he was getting every year was a student stipend or a student salary as a student working in a financial aid building. So I want to make it clear to folks that there's the scholarships you get, there's the grants you get, there's going abroad, there's also money you get when you work in an office at the school. So it looks like 60 or 70,000 a year, but if you bifurcate it, you'll see it, it can be very, very detailed explained as he explained to me when I first sat with him and said, how did this happen? So over the course of these seven years, have you received $429,000? No, I have not. Um, so how much have you received? How much in terms of um, in terms of grants, in terms of financial aid, uh, things along those lines? Employment. 
employment? Um, including employment, I've received, uh, for undergrad, I received over $200,000, but that also needs to add some context to that because I was a student year round. So I went to, student, to school for the fall semester, the spring semester, and I also went during the summers and studied abroad. And so there are, there are details that are out there that are inaccurate contextually, which are painting a picture that is inaccurate. And uh, furthermore, I think that it is important to note that I have never, the money that was awarded to me was through the discretion of university officials who had the authority to make those decisions. Um, into that. And I want to chime in, he was a 4.0 student. So yes. you get these kind of trips. Everybody at Howard doesn't get to go overseas. I know I didn't. They don't get to do mock trial or something you did? Mock yeah, there are, there are a lot of different elements that go into, I'm sure, like awarding students. And so some of those are high merit. And then, of course, the university also looks at need. Um, during my time at Howard University as an undergraduate student, my expected family contribution was zero. And so what that means is that the federal government determines based on your dependency on your parent and their income how much your family is expected to contribute to your education. Mine was zero. There are people who are saying <coughs> that $200,000 is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the annual tuition for Howard University? Uh, the annual tuition for Howard University undergrad, I think, is about 20 The 20 something thousand dollars. The cost of attendance ranges. Is that per semester? Uh, no, per year. The cost of attendance total, though, range is uh, typically about $44,000. So $44,000 per year. Uh, for a fall and spring fall semester. And spring. But, I, but I also went for the summer and had study abroad. So my cost of attendance would have been adjusted to accommodate my additional educational time. So if you didn't go to summer school and didn't study abroad. And didn't work uh, for the university. In a four-year period that would amount to about $170,000. Cuz it's 44,000 a year. Mm. Uh, times 4. About $170,000. So what you're saying is that if you add in the cost of um, summer school, add in the cost of studying abroad, that's how you get to the $200,000 figure. Approximately. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then law school that I went to Howard Law is probably 61,000 a year, 62,000 a year. Yeah, the cost of attendance is about $60,000 a year. So if you so so essentially what you're saying is your undergrad was around two hundred thousand dollars a year. Over two hundred. You've been in law school how many years? Three years. Three years. So that's about one hundred eighty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Now you're almost at four hundred thousand dollars. Correct. Okay. Now, no, I'm listening. I was going to say something. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I was. We're around four hundred thousand dollars. So, do you believe that uh, a lot of this is because um, of your blog post and? People are seeing the clothes and the travel and things on those lines. So let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. so, so explain that. Yeah. So a lot of people know at Howard University, we have a very, very uh, a reputation and a culture of people um, being very well pre presented. So not only being smart, but also representing yourself in the best way as possible. I was engaged in that before I came to Howard University. I was engaged in that throughout Howard University. Um, and once I finished, I con plan on continuing to be engaged in those things as well. I think that there are assumptions that are made um, about the things that I have or that I have received, and I think that they can be, again, misconstrued or taken out of context. For instance, I have um, friends that graduate from Howard that are in good places in the fashion industry at, in New York. And so sometimes I could be in New York and somebody say, hey, you got this. And also, you know, my mom believes in balling on a budget, you know. So somebody may say, oh, like you have on nice socks. Well, these socks were $9 from Nordstrom Rack. Or, um, you know, everything that I have, I got it typically at a discounted rate me, looking online. Let me chime in because this obviously is hurtful to my client. Let me chime in, Roland, that this is the epitome of the kid who goes to Howard, mom raising him alone, doing her thing, primarily mom. Mom and dad are separated. Kid makes a 4.0, wins a lot of awards, a lot of grants. Did some modeling, I think, right? Some minor modeling mm -hmm. here and there. Knows people in the fashion game. Got some clothes given to him. Starts a blog. Like we all know about Howard. Howard can be a fashion show sometime. And he's posting some of the latest fashions he's wearing. And folks have now said, well, money is missing over here. We know six people were hired, fired. Were you one of the six fired? And oh, wow, look, money's missing. Oh, wow, look how he's dressing. So it's easy to try to equate the, all, all of those together. But when you meet the young man, this is the epitome of a kid who spoke at commencement. For Howard, mm -hmm. this is you know Dr. Frederick knows him personally, which is why I'm waiting on the university to issue something to exonerate him. So uh, several employees were fired. Were you fi fired from Howard University? No, my employment ended at Howard University because I was going to law school. And most people who've been to law school know your first year the course material is rigorous, and so you aren't actually at Howard allowed to work during your first year. 
So uh, that's why I stopped working at the university. Now, four hundred twenty-nine thousand dollars is is a real number. Um, were you prosecuted? No, I've no. never heard from Howard University, and that's what I'm saying. They, the statements released by the university said they, I believe, began an investigation in December of 2016, um, that they fired six university employees, and as of today, I have never been contacted by Howard University. So, and we've reached out to Howard and said, anything you need from Tyrone, Mr. Hankerson, he's willing to come in, speak, sit down. He has nothing to hide. The, kid, the guys have already posted all his financials, which we all know is a violation of privacy rights under FERPA somebody has leaked his financials and I'm more outraged that the school in its negligence has allowed his financials to get out there. So a guy that's been at your school for seven years, if you do the math, 50,000 a year times seven is 350. You add the summer stuff to it, you add he worked for the school, easily you can get the 400,000 over seven years, easily. I got kids at Yale and other schools, you're spending that kind of money for four years. And he's been with the school seven years, so it's very easy to see it happen. And I'm just waiting for the school to say, hey, let's stop attacking an innocent kid who came here, did a good job with his mom, with his dad, and basically made a four, near 4-0 and got out of here summa, summa cum laude. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's also important to know, too, that the article alleged that, I, that this occurred, well, one, the number is inaccurate, and secondly, they are saying that this occurred over four years. So I think that the perception and the story that everybody has ran with is that Tyrone did this thing, and it's just simply not true. Now, you see, you study abroad. So uh, mm -hmm. where, where, where did you study abroad? Um, I studied abroad in Europe, and I also had an mm -hmm. opportunity to go to Ghana through the Young Africana Leadership Initiative through Howard University, where we went and uh, we taught grade school children. We did cultural immersion program. So you studied abroad for two semesters. How long did you study abroad? I studied abroad during the summer, during a portion of the summers. So w when you look at what has happened, mm -hmm. Um, in that article, you were the only person named. I was not. Uh, there were other names in the in particular article. There was another name. In the article that originally came out, I was not the only person who was named in that article. We had medium take it down. The first article we've already had taken down mm -hmm. because it was false. Clear so why do you believe you were named? I believe that I was named because, again, as, as I've stated before, I think that there is a current attack on Dr. Frederick and that if you wanted to present a narrative that I was the best person to present the narrative that there was mismanagement under his watch. Because again, I was a student who around the university people knew that I was intimately involved within the within the administration but as a whole. Everyone knew me, that I worked there, that I was in this space, then I received these awards, that I have a particular lifestyle that people view, you know, maybe upset about in so I think that I was the ideal profile to go after Dr. Frederick. It fits the narrative. But you have to think if someone embezzled 400000 and they left the school three years ago, wouldn't they have been prosecuted already? Yeah, I mean, I mean Dr. You know, he's been out of undergrad for three years now. This is when this supposedly happened. The, the premise is he worked in the A building and pushed the button and gave himself $400,000. When and I had, had no decision-making authority, I believe. No, I had no decision-making authority with the awards that I was given, nor have I ever authorized any money on my account. So, so let, let's go through. So, um, have you done uh, a full account in terms of uh, what you receive freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, senior year, yeah. in terms of scholarships, in terms of grants, in terms of financial aid uh, that lays out what you well, receive. Let me chime in. He has done it for me in an informal fashion. Obviously, he had classes this week. I was teaching at the law school this week, so he hasn't had time to get with our CPA team right. to do a full vetted CPA kind of report. But I'm not sure about you, but I can't remember what I did my freshman year of college in terms of financials. I remember getting through it and studying, but no one remembers seven years later. Howard gave me exactly $42,800.50. I think, well, well, you we, know, we, he we, had to go back and look at his records. Right, obviously. But, but, but it, this but week, we've been in school all week. Right, but is it your plan uh, to get the university to say, I want a full accounting or in terms of what I received? Oh, no, no. It's our plan to get with the university and have the university issue an apology to him and to exonerate him fully. We can go to the university and we can tell them, here's what he received. Here's what you're allowing the articles to portray. And I want to say this. I understand why the university didn't go high profile with the firings. That's very sound judgment because they didn't want to draw attention to the prior mismanagement prior to Dr. Frederick. 
they were intentionally trying to keep that quiet. So they fire six people, they don't announce it on campus, someone on the inside finds out about it and says, hey, we're going to throw Tyrone Hankerson's financials out there to show the university's covering up students like him who are getting a lot of awards and scholarships and grant money, and they're covering up people being fired. And this all comes to the conclusion Dr. Frederick should be fired because this is on his watch. Can when I? in fact, Dr. Frederick has done, I think, an excellent job trying to quell the storm, trying to clean up a lot of things that pre uh, was pre uh, occurred before him prior. Mm -hmm. Also, want to note that it, you know the board of trustees just released a statement as well, right before we had this interview, that these people who put this article out there also tried to extort Dr. Frederick, and I think That's that right. that is extremely. When you say these people, who, who these mean? The, the people that uh, originally, I guess, took the information to Dr. Frederick, we'll went to him and said, "Do this for me, or I will put this information out." Right. There. How do you know that? They released it just in a statement it's by the, the statement, board of trustees. The board of trustees statement this morning. Just released a statement this morning. And I think that, and it was in a couple of articles before they released this statement, and I think that Dr. Frederick, of course, probably did not respond in kind to someone making those type of demands towards the university. And, and I, Roland, uh, along with that demand, the demand to Dr. Frederick in the university is to exonerate this young man, but to also reveal who leaked his information on your watch. Mm -hmm. That part we can hold under this administration. Some of the other stuff they're cleaning up, the firings, and the informal policies that allow discretionary grants to go anywhere, we can't totally blame that on the current administration. But what the current administration can do is they can say, hey, how did his records get out here? How, that's what's more disturbing to me and why I got involved to help him this week because I thought it was just a clear violation of his privacy rights. The, you have students who are obviously in the administration building. Uh, they are uh, using the hashtag student power HU, the group is HU Resist. Mm -hmm. uh, do you believe that their actions are fair or unfair? Or do you believe they're targeting the university president? Or do you believe that they are truly representing the interests of students in demanding accountability and change at the university, not, not just with finances, but the issue of sexual assault when it comes to dorms and things on those lines? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that you know, across leadership, the pillars of our school is leadership, excellence, truth, and service. I think that most students, because of how, how the just synergy at Howard, that we truly embrace those things. And so I think that if students feel that it, there are concerns, that we most certainly should address those concerns. However, as an alum and also a student of Howard University, um, and you know, my class would say the last breadcrumbs of old Howard, I do believe that there is a tactical way that you go about doing things. I think that some of the things that are have been occurring on our main campus are inappropriate. Um, and in an effort to try to do the right thing, we're not doing it in a righteous way. And it reflects poorly among, at the end of the day, Howard University as a whole and you not mean just leaking one. your records. Yeah, leaking my records, correct. And so when we do these type of things, we have to remember that we all are still bound to this university, and so we don't want to tarnish um, everything that Howard has stood for for 150 years. There are a lot of people out there. I mean, look, I, I'm, as, as you're talking, mm -hmm. I'm looking at Twitter, I'm looking at Periscope, I'm looking at comments that are on Facebook as well, uh, and there are people who are saying uh, there's no way you can get a full ride. There's no way you can get the maximum uh, in financial aid. There's no way you could get... Forty-three, forty-four thousand dollars a year, or whatever that number is. What do you say to that? I say that you would have to talk to the university administrators about that and their discretionary power, mm -hmm. discretionary power in their policies. I can't, I can't answer for the university. Yeah, for every person that's saying that, I've had another family come to me and say, my child went to Howard four or five years ago, and the administration, in their own discretion awarded my child five grand, awarded my child 10 grand, awarded my child 12 grand. Not federal money, right. but these little slush funds or a certain group has a fund at the school. If you're running the financial aid office, you know where the money is and you know, hey, Roland Martin Jr. is here, he needs 10 grand or he's going to go back home. I push a button, he gets the 10 grand. So how does that process work? So, you, you, you're, so you're a student there and um, uh, is it a matter of, was it every year you or every semester? Uh, you said I need X amount of dollars, or I'm gonna apply for this or that. I mean, what, what, what was that process on how you were awarded dollars? No need. Yeah. Um, again, so the university looks at a different, a variety of factors, and two of the most prominent ones are merit and your your need. And so I was extremely uh, in merit. I was extremely high, and in need, I was extremely. Excuse me. In, in merit, I was extremely high, and in need, I was extremely high as well, based on my expected family contribution. Um, and so. 
in addition to that, my involvement on campus and things like that. What kind of things did you do on campus? Um, you know, I was, again, on the mock trial team. I participated in our student government. Again, a lot of people knew me in the office, I mean, the administration building, because I had serviced so many of the offices within enrollment management and also done things for, um, assisted with uh, getting things prepared for the Board of Trustees and for the President, et cetera. Um, I was, you know, participated in, I, I represented our school with the White House for the HBCU initiative. So there were a, a number of things that I did where I think that uh, the discretion was given to me because they didn't want to see me um, not be able to continue my education. And uh, when you talk about, first of all, where are you from? I'm from Atlanta. Um, and in your four years there, you were, uh, you talked about, talked about your mom, so um, uh, were, you, were you getting a few resources uh, from home to come to Howard? Yeah, that's correct. Um, when you also, so also there was a student who posted something about a panel receiving an email from you mm -hmm. saying that uh, university funds uh, have been right. uh, have been depleted. Mm -hmm. right. Were those the kind of emails that you sent out? Is that a legitimate email? Yeah, it is. It is uh, well, I haven't seen the actual email, but it is quite possible that the email did come from me. So again, I serviced um, the university directors as an assistant under the work um, under the. Excuse me. As a, um, yeah, well, as a student worker, I essentially serviced as an assistant. So sometimes emails could come to a director or a phone call would come through that I would vet, and a decision was rendered by university directors, and I may have communicated that decision back to students. But I did not have the authority to make those determinations. Right. So what you were doing was simply, the decision was, the was made, there. you communicated the message of the student, mm -hmm. uh, this, is, this is what the deal is. Right, yeah. While, while you worked there, were there other students, to your knowledge, that received that level of funding from the university? Um, I'm not sure. I wasn't privy to, you know, go into, I wasn't at work going through students' accounts and things like that. Uh, do, you, do you believe there were other students that, uh, who were applying to the financial aid office to get additional resources uh, to do the same things that you did? Yeah, they, well, it's quite common that students have been awarded from the discretionary fund. That's why the fund was originally created, was so that the directors could have some discretion in making sure that students were able to get through in, under different circumstances. And Roland, I want to say to those watching, if a student has got a 3.9, 4.0 GPA and comes from a high-need home, he's the kind of student that any institution is going to say, we got to do what we got to do to keep him here. He's working with the White House, he's working with the Mark Crow, he's mm -hmm. working in our A building, he's volunteering here and there, working in the community. This is what colleges create a discretionary fund for so that that kid doesn't find him or herself back at home. And I understand the pains of many kids out there who say, well, I was $1,000 short. Well, I was $5,000 short. And it's very unfortunate that they didn't know maybe the inner workings of the A building. That's very unfortunate. We wouldn't root that on anyone, but you can't deny the prototype of the good student is community service, great grades, volunteering, being a, a visible worker for the school and a good brand for the school. And it sounds from his experience at undergrad, he was one of those students who represented Howard Well to go to the White House. Did I hear you say? Yeah, I was uh, a part of the inaugural class for HBCU All Stars that the White House selected. Um, if we talk about, um, I mean, obviously, and let's just be clear, uh, there are students who get financial aid, mm -hmm. and they use it for whatever reason they want to use it for. Mm -hmm. um, were you one of those students who used financial aid on personal items, on clothes, on, on travel, on uh, things along those lines? Yeah, every, every student uses money for survival. 100% of us have done that, yes. Um, when, uh, and again, when I look at some of these accounts, I look at, look at things out there, they were saying that you were driving a Range Rover, that was your vehicle, <laughs> things like that. No, Do you own a Range Rover? I, have you ever owned a Range Rover? No, I have not, but it's actually my dream car. I will hope that, you know, this gets cleared up and that I could, you know, possibly one day afford to purchase one. But no, what occurred was that my, I believe it was my junior year during Howard's homecoming. Everybody at Howard knows that you get outfits and things like that. My roommate was a photographer, and I did a Hank's homecoming lookbook, which is actually featured in the Hilltop. And the we were, walk, the student newspaper, we were walking past a Range Rover, and we took a photo because, again, I was doing blogs that were showcasing lifestyle. But now, of course, social media has ran it that I have a Range Rover, but I don't. Did you own a vehicle during your four years? No, uh, not at all. Not at all. Um, or even one now? Yeah, I do have one now. And what car do you drive? I have an Infinity. I, huh? I have an Infinity. Okay. 
You are you are you currently working? You in law school? Are you currently working? Um, I have worked during the summers during my um, summer internship. So you know, in the legal field, that's when you really maximize your time to try to find employment uh, post grad. So I have interned. Um, do you do you believe that again? Article drops. They see a four hundred twenty nine thousand, and again, all of a sudden, they see your blog post, uh, and it and folks are calling you an Instagram fashion model because we've seen these stories before mm -hmm. of literally individuals going in debt just to wear fashions on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that those two things are colliding that has contributed to this impression that that you've been stealing and that and you were doing it for that particular purpose? Yeah, absolutely. And before we continue, I do want to again point out that that figure that you all and everybody else keeps quoting, it's inaccurate and it's wrong. Exactly. So I want to first say that. And exactly. of course, I mean... So, so you're saying that... that they're I'm quoting four hundred twenty nine thousand that you accurate. did not receive. Did not four hundred twenty nine thousand dollars. First of all, let's go back. One, you're saying that you did not take four hundred twenty nine thousand. Did not take. Embezzle take. You did not embezzle four hundred twenty nine thousand. And you're saying that other financial aid and uh, benefits from discretionary fund or whatever uh, that over the last seven years it did not total four hundred twenty nine thousand. That is correct, and I and I believe that the original article actually said four hundred and ninety two, and I right. think that it got taken down, right. and then there were all of these other somebody switched the numbers, right. and then now there's a four hundred and twenty nine. And, and I want to chime in here. This is why I said to him after the week is out, have an accountant come in and right. just get you the exact number. You're talking seven years of schooling. You're talking an honor roll kid. It's a lot of money moving around. I also want to point out, Roland. You said was it the perfect kind of storm? it's coming on the heels of how angry these students are at Howard. Keep in mind, the students made a checklist of protest issues. He's not on that list. There's a letter out today from the students of here's our demand. President Frederick has written back his responses. Mm -hmm. He's not included in that list. So if these students truly, truly believed he stole or embezzled 400 and whatever thousands of dollars or even $200,000 or 50,000, trust me, Howard students would have him at the top of that list and be pressing for charges. He's um, not on that list. But it's also, before we um, move on to the next point, again, the article also suggests that I received my aid in four years, which, again, is inaccurate. So I just want to you know, point out these inaccuracies. Um, the article that was up, uh, did you have that article taken down from Medium, or did Howard or someone else do? We had the article taken down. We notified them that it was clearly defamation. And or do you have any plans on going after Medium? We, he and I are going to talk with his parents. His father is very active in his life. I've known the family 30 years. Um, right now, I want to make sure he's safe. I want to make sure emotionally he's okay. Um, I want to make sure he has a smooth graduation next month, and then we can deal with that uh, media. There's another radio show that last night I saw was saying he was one of the six very popular rated show that we have to deal with them mm -hmm. next week because he was not one of the six. He was never an employee but they're calling him one of the six employees on various outlets. So we're gonna deal with all of that, but for right now, I want him to focus on graduating. Mm -hmm. I want him to stay in that summa kuma, whatever he is. Some of us graduated, thank you, Lordy, but he graduated summa kuma, Lottie. Lottie, and I wanna make sure <laughs> he gets out with that on his record because at the end of the day, it's about his education. Have you heard from President Frederick or any Howard University officials? No, I have not heard from any Howard University official as of to date, and the only communication that we have had was when we've reached out to them about the, again, my safety and welfare right. going to class. The deans, one of the deans of the law school has assured me that the law school has full security on hand, ready to deal with anything remotely. There are also, like, issues like I've been going to class and people have been tweeting that, like, I'm in class or things like that. So it poses a concern because, and not just for myself, but for my classmates, because, you know, today with the type of things that are occurring at schools, I would hate for, well, I would hate to be in class and somebody is intending to target me, number one, but also for any of my other classmates to be in a situation where they could be potentially hurt or our professors. And that's what breaks our heart the most about this. This is publicly hurting our university. There's no two ways about it. Mm -hmm. Whoever leaked his records. Was that university? You teach at the law school. No, no, I oh, taught sorry. classes, guest lectures, but I graduated, lectures. I graduated from the law school. From when? Uh, 95 from the okay. law school and 90 from the undergrad. Okay. So for both of us, this is a painful thing for Howard because mm -hmm. people around the country are not saying Tyrone Hankerson. They're saying Howard University is in another mess. I want to go back again. This audit was done. And it was completed uh, May of uh, 17, I think. May of 17. So in between that time, so they, according to Dr. Frederick, they did an ex they, they did an extensive audit of the financial aid office. Mm -hmm. Right, and fired six people. At no time have you been contacted 
by anybody regarding that audit or anything in that office? No, the university has not contacted me during that time at all. And as of today, has not contacted yeah, yeah. me. And as of when I represented him, nobody's kind of, they know as well. So if, if you did embezzle funds, I would assume you would be, would have heard from them between, between then and now. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Particularly if Dr. Frederick's job is on the line. I, if I'm in Dr. Frederick Sue's and I'm his advisor, I'm saying, look, we got to go prosecute this kid, if nothing else, but to save your job because he allegedly embezzled some money. You're one month from graduation. Mm -hmm. um, I had my job a month before I graduated. So that final month, I knew I was working. Mm -hmm. um, have you lost any opportunities as a result mm -hmm. of what has happened in the last 48 hours? Yeah. We've had employers kind of take a hands-off approach. Employers that were very excited about him have now said, hey, we want to see how this shakes out. They haven't said, we don't want nothing to do with you, but they're very cautious now, as you can imagine, and wanting to continue to interview him or to continue bringing him aboard. So that's the damage that we have to talk to Howard about because you've allowed this kid's records to leak out and now you have potentially damaged his whole legal career to the tune of you do five or ten years. Now we're talking about math. This kid probably lost a million dollars. And in addition, I also have to apply for the bar next month, and there's a character and fitness portion that I probably will now have to deal with right. regarding this situation. Right. So, Which will be clear, but he still has to share the allegation. What is it, what do you want to hear from Howard University? Um, I most certainly want Howard University to clear my name, of course, um, but I also want them, you know, again, to reassure the the Howard University community as a whole that, you know, we're taking proactive approaches to making sure that our university continues to be as strong as it is and so that it can continue to pe compete with its peer institutions. Um, I think that Howard is in a, it is in a, you know, a tough place, particularly the, over this last week, but I think that as a Howard University family, we always come together and we always come out, you know, stronger in the end. The decision not to disclose the six firings has backfired on President Frederick and the board. I understand why they did it, but as I said moments ago, I want to be clear to your listeners that they kept something hush-hush that in hindsight may have wanted to tell people. Like, look, we're cleaning this up. We know these people did it. We're going to fire them, and we're going to prosecute them. And I think they felt they couldn't do that because of the bad PR. If I was in your shoes, mm -hmm. I'm not sure I would be as calm. I'd probably be pissed. Um, when, when that article dropped, what were you doing? What was your response? Um, when the article dropped, I was doing work and I was immediately, I was in tears. I mean, it was a very, a very unfortunate situation because I be immediately became inundated with all of these messages, alerts, things. I have been non, constantly harassed since the moment that the article came out. Tuesday, Wednesday, um, this week? Yeah, one of those days. So the article comes out, I could not sleep the entire night. To be quite honest, I have not eaten much. Um, it's been a very, very stressful, stressful last couple of days. But, you know, I can say that with the support of friends that are near and friends that I have not talked to in years, that there has been a lot of support, which has helped me um, get through this thing. I've also had, you know, um, appointments and sessions with my therapist to try to make sure, you know, that we're in the right mental space. Yep. And um, so that we, you know, can be happy, healthy, and, you know, move forward at some point. What was the reaction from your family when this article came out? Um, my family was, they were very disappointed that my information was out there. You know, my dad, I ca called my father immediately, and then next thing, you know, the next morning, we had retained counsel from a family friend who's been a family, um, someone who we trusted, and, you know, we just had to come up with a plan because we couldn't really weep because, you know, the, the whole entire world is now creating this narrative about you. So we had to be proactive. And, and Roland, I'll openly share with you, but God, I was teaching a class the day the story broke. I'm in Atlanta, but I happened to be at Howard Law School the day the story broke, the day he was taking that class. And his father called me three hours before the class and said, did you see the story? My son needs help. Blah, blah, blah. and he happened to be coming to the class that I was teaching mm -hmm. and we went and sat two hours and I could tell he was choked up as anybody would be but I reassured him God's got you if you're innocent God's got you but you got to come talk to Roland and tell your story he didn't want to really talk to anybody he wanted to just kind of go in the corner as people do in these situations mm -hmm. but I said you got to vindicate yourself not just for you but for any other students records who are released or things are misleading and it, does he do fashion stuff yeah but when is that a crime 
I didn't know posing with new suits on and shoes on was a crime. And particularly at Howard, where it's a fashion show, I didn't know that was a crime. So your plan moving forward, obviously last month to graduate, when it comes to this, you plan on doing uh, your own audit to put together in terms of this is what he received. Mm -hmm. uh, do you plan on releasing that to the public? We haven't talked to his parents about that. That would be a decision for his parents. Um, but it's pretty much most of it has been released in that initial article. But, um, but, but, but you obviously mm -hmm. want to verify it from yeah. your end right. in right. terms Absolutely. of what it is. I don't think we will release every single dime or nickel <clears throat> from the school, but I think we want to tell folks here's what he really got, here's the accuracy of the story if he and his family, you know, agree to it. But I don't I don't really feel comfortable with his financials being out there right. any more than they have been. I think that just fuels the fire. I think the bigger story is did he embezzle? And the answer is no, he did not. And if well first of all, obviously uh, if you embezzle the federal funds, that's a federal crime. Correct. Well, there were no federal. There were funds no federal involved funds involved. involved. It's discretionary funds. And so, the, but so this was this was money given to uh, university. Correct. The, not given to the. This is the university's own money that they're alleging. Um, right, but alleged. but 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 Howard gets a, a substantial amount of money from the federal government Correct. to operate. Correct. So actually, well, no, the university released a statement saying that that no federal funds were involved in this matter. So the, the sticky but, part that you're alluding to is the management of the funds by the university. Right. That's what and, so the, and the reality federal is, or non -federal. the reality is, if money was stolen, especially if, again, the allegation is 429000 that's not $400. Correct. Right. I would think that there would be charges pressed against somebody if that kind of money was stolen. Correct. And we'll have all his numbers ready, so if that ever becomes a case or an issue, We'll clearly have a CPA certified, you know, verified document to say, here's what he got for seven years there, you know, there's nothing here. And we understand that people want to scapegoat somebody either because they didn't get financial aid or because the universities run poorly or because of other reasons, mm -hmm. but Mr. Hankerson is not going to be that scapegoat. And what you want from Howard University is, do you want an apology or do you want um, uh, a letter from President Frederick? Uh, that's, that, that states that you fairly received these funds over the last seven years uh, and that you did not uh, embezzle, steal, or improperly receive these, re these resources. Is that, is that what you want from how? I would prefer a letter from the university saying exactly what you said, that there's no finding of any wrongdoing on the part of Tyrone Hankerson, the university in itself, how they manage funds, that's on them. But in terms of Tyrone Hankerson, there's no embezzlement, there's nothing criminal. He graduated as an upstanding student who spoke at our commencement and the letter. Have and, we're, you, and we're sorry for the release of your files. Have you already, have you communicated that to President Frederick or anyone at Howard University? We've sent an email over, but the school was pretty much shut down yesterday because of the protest. The students took over the A building, so I haven't confirmed whether they gotten it. And I know today's Good Friday and then we have Easter. So my plans are on Monday to reach out to the school officially on letterhead and say, hey, when can we meet to talk about this? Anything else you want to say? Yeah, um, I want to say first that, again, I did not embezzle any money from the university. Um, but I would also like to say that I'm deeply um, I'm, I'm saddened for our university and the place that we're in. And for all of the members of the Howard University community and family, whether those are parents or students, or you know Cross anyone, perspective, perspective students. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sorry for any hurt that this situation may have caused you. But I also want to let people know that despite whatever our university goes through, if you're a student who wants to go to an academic institution where you can get a top education, where you can be surrounded and immersed in a culture that produces some of the most dynamic people in our nation, and if you want to have um, a, robust a robust experience that can make you the better person that you want to be, the Howard University is the school for you to go to. Tyrone Angers, I appreciate it. Thanks Thank a bunch. Thank you so much. Thanks, Walker. You. I appreciate it. Thank Thanks a lot. Thank you. I uh, want to thank everybody who has uh, who've been watching this live stream on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Periscope as well. Obviously, uh, we will be covering this story. Uh, I have uh, reached out to Dr. Frederick uh, as well as other officials there, and I'm sure I'll be talking with them uh, in the near future as well. And so we certainly will stay on top of this story and others as it relates to what's happening at Howard University. To all of you, thank you so very much. And of course, you can watch the replay of this. It will immediately archive on Facebook, on Periscope, and Twitter, as well as uh, YouTube. So thank you very much. I'm Roland Martin. Chat with you soon.